Hi, my name is Adam and I head up design at Weights and Biases. Today I'd like to show you how I'm using our newest product Weave to build my personal AI assistant and take it from concept to production. Building an AI powered application often starts with a compelling demo, but as tasks become more complex, the challenges of creating a reliable production ready app become very apparent, especially with the non-deterministic behavior of LLMs. It's essential to have a clear view of performance and iteration progress, and that's exactly what Weave is designed for. So let's say you want to build an AI agent that can become your personal problem solver. You'd like this agent to be able to understand requests and execute them. And I just so happen to have such an agent, and his name is Winston. We can ask Winston to help out by Summarizing this article on how we can prevent prompt injections in our app. Winston has access to a set of tools that allow him to do things like posting to Slack, fetching web pages, and running commands, and even some helper agents to do more complex tasks. And here we can see that he was able to give a, use those tools to give us a nice uh, summary here. And we could say, okay, great, this, this looks good. Let's uh, post it in Slack for our team to read. And again, you can see uh, now Winston will use some more of his tools to format the Slack message and even post it into Slack. And sure enough, we can switch over to Slack and see, there it is. He posted uh, right into Slack the summary of the article. Obviously, a lot of work went into getting Winston to this point. Uh, and much of it involves iterating on prompts and model settings to achieve the desired behavior. Visibility into how the application works is a critical part of the workflow. And this is the first way we've helped improve my speed of iteration. In the case of Winston, early versions had a number of issues. For example, here we can see a weave trace where we asked Winston to identify important unread emails. And at first glance, the output seems correct. But if we look closer, we can see that Winston actually hallucinated tools it wanted to use. In this trace, we can see that Winston actually planned to call two tools called filter important emails and notify user, uh, neither of which exist. Since I'm using Weave, every interaction with Winston is logged as a trace like this one. Traces not only allow us to identify issues quickly, but they also give us the knowledge we need to iterate on our application. And it's really easy to set up Weave to get this level of observability. All we have to do is add a few decorators, like you see here, to our code, and we've automatically captured all the inputs and outputs from these function calls, as well as any LLM calls inside those functions. In this case, we use Python, but Weave also supports TypeScript. So now that we had visibility, we could start iterating on Winston's prompt to prevent cases like this hallucination. What we have found while building AI-powered app apps like this is that iteration speed is crucial. The quicker you can identify and fix these issues, the faster you can get this app into production and provide value for your users. We can use Weave's Playground to quickly experiment with edits to our prompts to attempt to eliminate issues like this. So any trace uh, of an LLM call in Weave can be opened in a chat view where we can edit any of the model settings or even try different models. In this case, what I'd like to do is try and edit Winston's system prompt to, to, see, to make sure that it will actually only use tools available to it. So here we're, we're saying, here are the available tools, and here we're gonna try just inserting the word only, and we can save this new system prompt, and we can actually just retry here. And now we can see that just by adding the word only, we can see that the tools it's using are look like all the right ones. Getting unread emails, getting the email content, these are all tools that exist. Now, the playground gave us a great way to quickly experiment, but we really needed to understand if we were actually making our application better beyond just vibe checks on individual inputs. We needed to be able to trust that Winston could handle many different types of input 
and we needed a way to measure his ability to do so. Uh, to accomplish this, we used Weave evaluations. Evaluations consist of a data set and scores to evaluate the performance of our LLM calls. For Winston, we created a data set that included a range of the requests uh, that he would uh, be given and the actions we would expect for him to perform for each task. We also created some basic scoring functions to validate he responded in the correct sentence type, like question or statement, and another that made sure Winston used correct and valid tools. With the evaluations and scores set up, we now had a systematic way to check the effectiveness of any changes we made. Here we can see the results of an evaluation run, and now we can actually see that we've essentially created tests that will catch hallucinations like the one we just saw in the future. You can see here that uh, for this input, we see that the test has failed from our tool usage score, that in fact we are, we have, Winston is trying to use some invalid tools here, this filter and this notify, which do not exist. These basic scores go a long way uh, and are very helpful. But we also want to get some more qualitative evaluations. And for that, we leveraged LLM judges. For Winston, we actually created an LLM judge that outputs the strengths and weaknesses for any plans that Winston creates. And this feedback is a great starting point for how we could improve future versions of Winston. So for instance, we can look at the weaknesses of uh, that the LLM judge found in this particular one and you can see how it actually calls out there's a lack of detail on how important emails are identified and that we, it doesn't actually specify the channel or method for giving notifications. So developing LLM judges can take a bit of time, but we've actually come out of the box with several different types of pre-built scores that you can implement right away uh, to add this type of qualitative information to your evaluation. And, and now that we had a way to measure the impact of our updates to Winston, it was time to iterate again. One of the major decisions to make when building LLM-powered applications is deciding on what model to use. For a production app, you'll likely need to balance trade-offs like cost and speed versus quality and reliability. Here you can see a list of evaluations we ran each with different model settings. And we've made it really easy for us to compare these uh, different evaluations uh, to, so that we can make some more informed decisions. So here we compared the results of three different models across our data set, GPT-40, Gemini 1.5 Pro, and GPT-40 Mini. At the top, we can see how each model performed at various scores. You know, one of the metrics we have is response type score, which determines if Winston is replying correctly with an answer or a question. And it's clear in this case that GPT-40 and Gemma are easily outperforming 4.0 Mini. We can also see that that's not actually necessarily true for all the tasks and that each model actually has strengths and weaknesses. This is the type of information that you're trying to get an intuitive feel for and understand what models perform best in, in certain in what situations. And while these metrics help us understand performance at a high level, in order to iterate to improve our performance, we actually need to look at the performance of these models on individual data set inputs. So and this this view comparison also makes that very easy to do. You know, here we can see the task was to convert some HTML to markdown. And this is a, actually a task that an LLM can do itself. So we would like Winston to respond straight away with an answer rather than using a tool. And for this particular example, you can see the outputs of each of the, um, of each of the models, the different types of, of answers that it gave. And we can actually see the results of all of our, uh, of, of the scorers. And that in this case, actually, 4.0 Mini was the one 
that responded the correct way that we would expect. And so this level, this example level information gave us an idea of what to improve in our next iterations uh, on our models. Now, a quick side note, you, you might notice that we have the word trials at the bottom of this table. And this is really important because, again, considering the non-deterministic outputs of your LLMs, you're going to want to run multiple trials for each eval. So you can not only understand how it's performing on the task, but get a sense of how consistent your model is. Here you can see the results across the trials are the same for each model, so we can be more confident that our app will respond similarly over and over. So progress on evaluations is not always linear. You know, some iterations will improve and some will regress. With this loop of iteration and evaluation, we create a lot of evaluations. And at times it's hard to keep track of uh, the evaluations, let alone the changes that went into them. So fortunately, Weave tracks all of this automatically for us. And this is a diff view between two versions of the model Winston that were used in two different evaluations. <clears throat> and at the moment, I have around 250 versions of Winston. So obviously, there's no way for me to remember all the settings in each one. You know, here we can see all the different properties that Winston has. And if we turn on diff only mode, we can easily see which properties changed between these two versions. And here we can dive down uh, nicely to look at the prompt. It looks like the prompt is the system prompt is what changed. And we get this great diff to see, okay, where we removed some words and um, obviously added some sections. So this is between these two versions, I can clearly see, well, this is where I was adjusting uh, the routine for Winston to follow. In other words, how to answer the question. This is where I added more information around when to use a chat completion, uh, when to actually use some tools. Um, and so now I can, I can see the difference between these two models and that can again, help me inform, okay, the evaluations that use, you know, version, uh, 221 versus 220, you know, what were the results? Was that, uh, progress or uh, a regression based on this type of, of change. So these are some of the features that have enabled me to create AI powered apps like Winston. And uh, there are still so many more features uh, coming soon in Weave, including online evals, guardrails, um, and many other things. But I hope this inspires you to start using Weave to build your own AI applications.